I come alive in the dark And I keep getting stronger My limits the sky I do the impossible, impossible Everywhere you go, you're playing in a rivalry game you're hoping that you have players that have a little bit of that magic. You know, in these big moments under the bright lights that can hit big shots to help you advance. Everyone in this locker room is ready to go. As a team, we, we want to take this step with this group where we go from contenders to champions. You just don't want it to end. You know, you don't want to have that last practice. You don't want to have a last game with them. Ultimately, our goal is to win a national championship. Doing that in a place like UConn, it's a serious legacy. You become immortal. We see ourselves as one of the best teams in the country, and we don't think anyone can stop us. Just continue what we've been doing, playing hard, rebounding, playing defense, and we'll have the 2023 banner right behind me. Now move mountains. I would have beaten the heart of a crash test dummy. I'm all so astounded. Yeah. Look up and beam to the stars so you can turn off the lights. Impossible, impossible. You break the season into four parts, you know, the non-conference part of things the conference part of things, the conference tournament, and then the NCAA tournament. We were super successful in the non-conference, obviously. It's just very few players in the country like Adama that can do the things he does for us defensively in the low post, in the ball screen game, at the rim. And then also have the ability where we can throw it to him in the post, even when he doesn't get good position. Or we could just throw him the basketball and he could just go and get us some free points. He could always make a play, whether it's late shot clock, or if the play breaks down, you know you can get him the ball and he's gonna make something happen for the team. I don't think there's anybody that can stop him. Everybody know me know like I'm going to like I'm a post up player. So every time I catch a ball in the post, first thing I think about is like time to score. You know what I mean? Time to score. That's why they give me a ball in the post. Time to score. If you not double team, you double team, pass out to somebody that can shoot because you have like like four or three guys around you that can shoot. His work ethic and his will, you know, they become part of the DNA of this program and team. Started from the bottom, started from the bottom. But the top is where I'm headed. But the top is where I'm headed. On the journey to conquer. Journey to conquer. I won't stop till I'm a legend. I won't stop till I'm a legend. Who's going to fill R.J. Cole's shoes? He was a tremendous point guard at both ends of the floor, including defensively, but likely it's going to be East Carolina University transfer Tristan Newton. Scored over 1,000 points in three years at ECU. Turnover, sloppy. Newton has it. He attacks the 10, and he throws it down right-handed. Newton curls right, fires on the left side of Calcaterra for three. Got it. And there's the 10th rebound oh. for Tristan Newton. And he secures. The UConn triple-double, the first since 2015. I'm just curious, did I miss, how does the whole building know it? That's big, that's, he made history. To be able to do that at a historic program like this at UConn, like where not many people have done that, it's crazy. He can pretty much do everything. He can make plays, he can score, he can be a facilitator. He can kind of play whatever role he's needed in that game. 12 triple-double in school history. Coach, you mentioned in college basketball, you can maybe see two or three of those a year. Yeah, maybe. The big headliner news, Jordan Hawkins and Andre Jackson, two of the Husky stars, are back tonight. Look, about to motivate, make the stakes higher, take a rough sour, turn the paint pipe, with a squadron that a swim across the lake of fire, just to add another brick to the empire. Yeah, we knew this was coming. Best shooter and best footwork of anyone I've ever coached. Can score from all three levels, can get to the rim, can shoot the mid-range pull-ups, can get to a floater, catch and shoot threes, threes off the dribble. So he's a really dynamic player. He can score the ball in so many different ways, so it's hard to stop him. Make a bone shake, make a vibrate, dominate, time to dominate, 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 yeah. And on 
Andre Jackson's going to make his first entrance of the season. And UConn fans stepping up. They've been waiting for this for a while. I think my first game back, I was super hyped to just get out there and just play basketball. Honestly, it was fun. The crowd actually gave me a, a good ovation, which was something that I've never had here at UConn, so that's the first time. I always remember that game for a long time. I felt like I had a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm like on the defensive end especially. Hawkins pulls up for three, no good. And Jackson kept it alive. And it's still loose, and finally, Phillips comes up with it. And Jackson nearly stole it again. He dives on the ground, and we got a hell ball. Andre Jackson, have you looked at the scoreboard? 71-40. He's playing like it's 71-70. I slept better the night before. I knew Andre was returning. He embodies everything that I am as a coach, and he's also one of the most exciting players in, in, in the college basketball game. And, and he does it without even sometimes taking a shot. You can't take your eyes off him when he's on the court. There's not a lot of guys like that at the college game that can impact the game without ever taking a shot, and UConn has one with Jackson. And another steal. It's Jackson on a run out to Jordan, and he threw it down. Hawkins and Jackson, welcome back, gentlemen. And UConn wins it. They're 4-0. 86-51 is the final, and UConn scores 86, right about their average for the first four games. You know, we played some low majors to start, and then we gradually increased the, the level of competition from the low majors to, to mid-majors that have won a lot of games the last couple of years in Buffalo and in Wilmington. And we knew we had a stretch of five high major games that were going to be a real test for this team. This is the Phil Knight Invitational. We're in the Rose City. Portland, Oregon, number 20, UConn, and Oregon. This quarterfinal matchup. Can't stop when we start, we gon' go get it done. Start when we stop, we gon' go get it done. Get it when we start, we gon' get it done. Start when we stop, we gon' go get it done. We gon' go get it. We gon' go get it. Hey. UConn has put it together, winning three games this week in Portland. What a day for UConn basketball. Led by 15 points from Donovan Klingon. 10 rebounds, a double-double for him. He did a great job the entire tournament, protecting the rim. Uh, he did a good job in every one of those games, and I think that he definitely deserved it as a, as a big man. And he really just had a great impact on that game. The second he checked into that game, it was completely different. And that, that style of defense that they were playing, they couldn't really match up with him. And he was able to get some lobs and able to get some some easy looks and able to like alter some shots on the defensive end, get some get a lot of rebounds and he made a big impact, especially scoring the ball as well. Alley oops to Klingon and he stuffed it home. Big night for Donovan Klingon and the Yukon Huskies win the Phil Knight Invitational Championship. Impact, control, winning basketball, the team game. Congratulations, Yukon. We gon' get it done. We gon' 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 we gon' get it done. We probably would have liked to have an easier game after that, but we get right to Oklahoma State and then we go on the road to Florida. But, you know, we were playing some of our best basketball in that two-week period. I think the way that we did our schedule was really smart, and now we got 20 Big East Wars waiting. We got the numbers, we got the numbers, we got numbers now. This thing is going to be like a three-month deal, and we're going to have to be consistently excellent in order to pull it off. Everywhere you go, you're playing in a rivalry game. Because we know what the biggest like, uh, confidence is about. Every team can beat anybody. There's another level of, like, I played against these guys. This is my third year playing against all these same guys. These guys have been watching me play for the last two, three years. They've been watching the Dama play for the last two, three years. The game's going to be more physical and more intense and more of a grind at times. And we know that going into a lot of games that we control how the game's going to go. Offensively, we're one of the best teams in the country because we know how to attack our opponents and, and we move the ball and share the ball to get great shots. And at the defensive end of the court, we're very well prepared. These players make a great commitment. And then also, it's a very tough conference. They don't like to call too many fouls. It's really rough. And I think that's definitely going to be something that's a little different. And I'm, I look forward to it, for sure. We're they have played a real schedule, has UConn. This isn't a farce. 
No. You go on a neutral floor and beat Oregon and Alabama and Iowa State, and you beat a really good Oklahoma State by double figures. But they have sent a message in my eyes to college basketball. Well, this is a real team. Live from Hinkle Field House in Indianapolis, Indiana, we welcome you to UConn men's basketball. It is the Big East opener for the 11 0 and third ranked UConn men as they get set to collide with the Butler Bulldogs. Couple of keys, attack baits inside, get touches early for Adama Sinogo. Offensive rebounds, second chance point as Butler is not a very good team on the offensive glass. We always know offensive rebounds are important for us. That's something that Coach Hurley emphasizes, so we rely on them to help us win games, give us extra possessions, more points, so um, we kind of just stuck to our identity and just went after the rebound. It's the story of the game right now, Jeff. Dominating the offensive glass is UConn. Any 50-50 loose ball, UConn's got all of them. UConn has more offensive rebounds than Butler has total rebounds. Transition three for the right, no good. Rebound, Bates put back good inside. Muscles his way up and in, and he's fouled by Hawkins. No one's going to back down at any time in the game, you know, any Big East team. So, you know, we knew that they were going to fight and try to inch their way back. And we hadn't really felt that a whole lot. You know, we had been on the road one time previously at Florida and pretty much controlled the game start to finish. What a close pass from Lacocious. The crowd is back into this thing at Hinkle. You know, they have a great home crowd at Hinkle. It was nice for us to see uh, the team respond. I thought Adama in particular did a great job of really establishing uh, the interior for us and then a team collectively built on that. And this game's turned out to be a good one. Under 10 minutes to go, four point game. Sonogo back on the floor for UConn. Sonogo tries his hand at three and he buries it. Sonogo, another offensive rebound. Hawkins up drives and lays it up and in. A chance for one more. Aline quickly to the front court. Stops. Oh, between the leg dribble to the rim. Underneath for Sonogo. Reverses and hits. Sonogo has been a one man wrecking crew today. What was a four point deficit for Butler. Sonogo came in and he put the Huskies on his back. Now dishes it out in the corner to the shoot. Joey California rattles it in. Delivers the exclamation point for a road win for the UConn Huskies. You know, I, I know I'll come off the bench and I just got to be patient. Uh, my opportunities to shoot the ball will come. Um, you know, just being ready for it. I'm just focused on keeping my body warm and making sure I'm ready to go when that time comes. Sell out crowd and Gamble and UConn trailing 53 to 49. Going to get clean into the game now for Sonogo. Also, Carcaterra will get back on the floor for the Huskies. And they need a little offense. They've yeah. been struggling. Got front court left. Is the lead. Jackson charges inside to Calcaterra. Triple penetration. Joey puts it up and in. And he's fouled on a runner. Calcaterra drives to the paint. Goes behind his back to Klinger. Oh, what a play. I mean, I've been coming to games at Gamble for two years, and I've never Never heard it that loud. Calcaterra for three. Oh! oh! Baby! That was crazy to watch. I mean, the behind the back pass, the three point shot, the little one handed layup that he had. Adama on a handoff to oh, try to go to Calcaterra. Calcaterra with a clock. Oh! A one handed shot by Joey! I like to think of myself as an athlete, you know, outside of basketball. So, uh, you know, playing other sports, the football instincts that I got, and, you know, I could have been a wide receiver as well. Look at Adama Sinogo. He walks over to the other side of the court and gives Joey California a huge hug. Huskies in the middle of a 12-0 run. So UConn wins it, 84-73. Georgetown put a major scare in them, led by seven in the second half. But UConn answered the bell. You know, in a lot of ways, this kind of challenge might have been just what the doctor ordered for the Huskies. The thing I always remember about the Georgetown game is me getting my tooth knocked out. Stop and go over Klingon, and he's able to bank it in. And Klingon got an elbow right in the chops. Came in the lane, went for a layup, and hit me with the elbow in the tooth, and that knocked it backwards, uh, broke it in half. And then I got it replaced before halftime, and then 
Went back out in the second half, knocked my tooth again. Blocked by Klingon. He got hit in the face again. I'm his roommate, so I heard all about it. But um, he got elbowed or something and then lost a tooth. Got it pulled out. Um, he has a fake one in there now, I think. So, um, But yeah, he lost a tooth. <laughs> We jammed it back in there for him and kind of held it in place uh, for the remainder of the game. And then he was at the dentist at uh, 8 a.m. the next morning. That was like the most pain I've ever been in. Uh, but the next next morning I went to the dentist, got it ripped out. and oh. Well, the Villanova game was next. Obviously, that's a big one for us. Um, and I thought the defensive effort was amazing in that game. We were really locked in uh, to the scouting report and the responsibilities of guarding those individual players and uh, showed a lot of fight. Here comes the crowd trying to get a counterattack going for UConn. Largest lead for Villanova. Newton skips it over to Pierman. That's a long three. Oh! Buried it! And the triple ties this thing's up at 36. Hawkins on the find from Diara for three. Oh, a good offense. Making you pay. Catch trying to get it in. Having trouble. And it's stolen again. Diara got it to Hawkins. Corner three ball. Paraben rebounds. Puts it in. You got clean. There he is. There it goes. Huskies now start to roll. They're up by 10. This place has erupted. Slater on the right sideline. Starts left. Kicks back to Dixon. Long three over Klingon. Good. Daniels riding Riddick. down the lane for two. A nice screen. Riddick well. Kicks it over to Long Gino on a baseline drive. And up and in. Now it's a two-point game. Jackson on the left wing trying to get down low to Sonogo. And he does. Sonogo working on Eric Dixon. Spins on him. Tries to power it in. And Sonogo lays it in on a reverse. They needed that. UConn four-point lead. Yara front court right gives to Caravan, ball over his head, skips across court, Jackson open for three, Andre hits! A massive three, and that might be the end of the line for Villanova. UConn wins it, 74 to 66. It was not easy, Villanova always a tough out. We had Xavier right after, and I think it was just a reality check for us. We didn't play defense as well as we wanted to, and we kind of just let Xavier get whatever they wanted. Sintas Center was electric for them too, so we just didn't stick to our identity, and then we got our first loss. You know, the Providence game was different. It wasn't nearly as high paced. Um, it was only a 60 possession game for us. Uh, they were very, very physical throughout the course of the game, and we were just unable to get into a flow. Coach Hurley always preaches on us to stick to our identity, and when we don't stick to our identity, that's what happens. We lose the two games. It's just a learning experience for us. We're going to learn and grow from it, and um, the beauty of the Big East is we get to see those guys again. Well, the Creighton game was next. That was a big one for us, you know, coming off a two-game losing streak to have them come into Gamble Pavilion. It's a team that's presented some challenges for us over the years, so it was great to see our guys step up the way that they did. Uh, you know, Adama did an unbelievable job of kind of dominating the interior for us in that game, and I thought we really guarded uh, with the sort of focus that we need to, held a prolific offensive team well below their averages. That's Kane's Jordan Hawkins! Kane's gets the angle, and he banks it in! Kane's Caravan puts up a second one! I think the team's coming back even stronger now. I mean, we've battled through so much adversity. We've played so many tough teams so far, so we've been through experiences, the ups and downs. We've had big wins, we've had some difficult losses, but I think it's all gonna prepare us better for the future, and I think big things are coming for us. It's UConn and the Butler Bulldogs here at the XL Center. UConn at the stretch of games, they have struggled mightily. Now they gotta stop the skid somewhere, and this would be a good day to do it. It had been a tough stretch of a schedule and, uh, you know, with the staff getting COVID and missing time and losing kind of at the buzzer at Seton Hall, we really needed a win badly. Yo, we here, we back, we back. We back. Haas is the hype guy. He always brings us together, always gives us a good speech before the game, gets us hyped up. I mean, it means a lot. It means the world to us. I just want to bring energy to the team. Even when I'm not on the court, I want to bring something else to the team. Giving guys encouragement, you know, high fives, you know, tell them, yo, you're, you're a good player, go out there and show it. Stop and go move by Tristan. Lays it in! Hunter on the baseline, can't get it off. And a shot blocked by Sonogo. Now, Lord, they get it to Diara. He comes up 13 8. 
Sling it, trying to power it inside. Spins, hangs, lays it in. Taylor, pick and roll, Jackson intercepts. Sling it, Sling with the ball over his head. Backdoor cut, Caravan, reverses it home. The two freshmen, timeout. And the Huskies have brought some energy to the building and opened up a double-digit lead, 24-13. Blocked by the air, and Caravan saves it. Step back three, Hawk. Got it. Samson Johnson going to get a chance to play some basketball. And that is Joey Calcaterra's 1,000th career point. UConn comes back home and gets a 30-point victory. Xavier's coming to Campbell Pavilion on Wednesday, and they are the league leaders right now on top of the Big East standings. Thirty-nine to twenty-four, Xavier. UConn's got a lot of work to do at halftime. Obviously, the group was disappointed and a little stunned, to be honest with you. And I think your your message at halftime was just go win every four-minute war in the second half. You know, go win each war by you know, a couple points, and late in the game we'll find ourselves back in it. Here's Sonogo spinning right, double team gets to Jackson, drives inside, and lays it in. 42-28, Xavier. Caravan between the rings, starts to his right hands to Jordan Hawkins. It's the three-pointer, good. Keep up the full-court pressure. Hawkins stop and go move. Sonogo for three, and he hits. UConn's made two threes now. 12-point game, long way to go. Jackson on the right to Newton. Newton curls left, and Caravan turns and fires a three. Caravan! Bang! Give it up to Colby Jones, and he stepped on the sideline, and that's a turnover. Jordan Hawkins limps up the court. I don't know if he's okay or not. Timeout. UConn back in it. Eight-point game. Long way to go. Plenty of game. Jordan Hawkins is a very, very tough guy, mentally, physically. With his reputation growing as a talented young player, these other teams are really, really gunning for him, and they're really physical with him, and he's you know, learning what it's like to go from, you know, an important player on the team to number one guy on the other team's scouting report. Jackson Bowles gets back to Hawkins, long three. Good! Oh, oh. UConn fans are ready to explode. Gives it up to Sonogo, dribble penetration on Nunji. Kicks it back to Hawkins, who sets and fires. Hawkins, good. It's a three ball! It's a triple, baby! 56-54, two-point game. Third a timeout, and Dan Hurley's got this place rocking, and Hawkins has brought a game, an A game, here in the second half. He was just unconscious, I would, I would say, you know. He's so dynamic, constantly moving. His, his ability to make shots is nothing I've seen before, nothing I've played with in college since my three years, so he, he's truly, truly, truly a great player. The Hawkins into the paint. Hawkins up fake, puts it up. In! Oh! He was in traffic! Someone clipped him! He put it in! Hawkins got a huge smile on his face! I don't know how it went in. He was in a mass of traffic. He's got 25 to 27 points in the second half. Yeah, we lost that game by three. Some things we took from the second half that we just had to do for the rest of the season. A lot of teams would have folded and just accepted a 15, 18 point loss, but you know, proud of, I guess, the fight, but definitely no moral victory. Welcome to the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois for Big East basketball tonight. The Huskies visit the DePaul Blue Demons. They might have been struggling this year, having lost three straight since that time, but this team has the ability to beat some of the better teams in the league. Can UConn take them out of their game tonight? They're three and three on their home floor in the Big East, so they are obviously a dangerous opponent for UConn. Yeah, DePaul was next, and it was a chance for us to get an important win to put the Xavier game behind us and you know, start to rebuild the, the psyche and the confidence of the group. And obviously, to have 20 points or more from three different players, two guards, and and a big guy. Um, you know, generally, that's going to be enough. Mashup another number 11, Caravan drives inside. Caravan! 
got a piece, and he deflected it loose. Jackson ahead to Sonoma with a great pass and a great catch for two. It's to Paul with it, and a steal by Newton. Newton on a run up. He goes in to put it up, and he made it! What a shot! Acrobatic! Caravan fires over the defense to Hawkins. Into the paint. Newhart's last two field goals are drives from 15 feet out by Sonogo. Spins it to Newton, drives to the paint. He gets hit, puts it up and in! Oh, baby, that was sweet by Tristan Newton. Newton steps behind the three-point arc and launches, and he hits on the baseline. Wow, some trickery from Tristan Newton. Newton sprints to the front court. Gives to Hawkins, fakes, drives inside, and scoops it home. Superman has emerged. Long, swinging saves. Aline has it. And there's an exclamation point for you by Jordan Hawkins. UConn wins it 90 to 76. They get their 17th win of the season. They go to 17 and 6. So the rest of the season, we have a bunch of rematches, teams we faced before. I mean, it's always hard to beat a team twice, so I'm definitely looking forward to the teams that, uh, that beat us the first time. I think the team that you know, makes the, the, the best subtle adjustments that uses that first game to learn and, and get better. Uh, which team is, is, is kind of you know, fresher and in a better mental state this time of year. It's all about confidence and, and belief and, and mental toughness because as you get into February, you know, the, these Big East games especially, they don't always resemble basketball. They sometimes feel like uh, a boxing or UFC. Welcome to Capital One Arena, the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Huskies need this one. Try to sweep the road trip this week, Wayne, and get some momentum as they head towards Marquette and Creighton next week. Huskies hoping to avoid what happened at Gamble where they fell behind by seven points early second half. Then they had their best comeback of the season to come back and beat the Hoyas. We were losing by, like, I think eight like nine minutes ago. Joey California, you know, he gave us a little run uh, out there in the second half, so that was big for us. Then, you know, going to Georgetown, we knew that we was going to have to be well prepared for this game. You know, they got some good guards that could really go downhill. I think they're a lot better than their record. Uh, you know, pretty much every night out, they've been really competitive with teams across the Big East Conference. Uh, a lot of times they're up at halftime or in a one or two point game at halftime, and they just haven't been able to finish games down the stretch as frequently as I'm sure they would have liked. But They've got very talented players. They've got some of the best guards in the conference, and so uh, it's no surprise that they're in every single game. So it'll be Adama Sonogo against his former teammate, a cook, a cook, on the opening tap. Here's Spears, front court right. He gets it to Murray, pops a three, and it's good. And Georgetown takes the lead. Here's Newton to the basket, goes alley-oop to Hawkins. Oh, and he crushed it. Newton spins into traffic, back to Sonogo, sets and fires a three. Good, Adama. And he now has 1,001 career points at UConn. Brandon Murray ties this thing up at 36. Newton goes alley-oop to Andre, and he flushes it two hands. Down to two seconds, Hawkins got to throw it up there, and he did. Andre Jackson for three. Good, hey, Andre back. Jay Heath has it at the hash, and he'll try a three. Good. Oh, man, six threes by Georgetown, and they're back in it again. Timeout, UConn. Now they have a three-point lead with 51.6 left, and the ball. Scoring here, I think, is more important than using all 30 seconds. Well, of course, it's a one-possession game right now. Yeah, so there was a situation late in the game where we had a three-point lead, and we really wanted to put pressure on the rim. Um, earlier in the game, we'd had some success with Tristan Newton in one of our actions, so we were able to put him in a dribble handoff where he was able to get downhill, and the game opened up from there. Here's Tristan Newton. He's had a great game. It's rejected by a cook, but they keep it out to Caravan. He got it! Caravan, another huge three! And that's probably the play of the game, started by Jackson. Saving that play with the hustle. And Andre is probably one of five or ten players in the country that would have had the awareness and the capability uh, to find that cross court pass to Alex. You know, threw it on a dime, and, and Alex knocked down pretty much the kill shot there. And that'll do it. UConn is going to escape. 
68-62, they win it in D.C. And they get back above 500 in conference play at 7-6. Two of the top 21 teams in the country meeting here tonight for the second time. First time around, Marquette got the better of the Huskies, 82-76 in Milwaukee. Great game, great crowd there. And we're expecting the same here tonight in Hartford. Marquette, big, big game. Uh, lost them uh, back in Milwaukee. Uh, so we knew we had to get this one. Uh, they were a top 10 team. They were a really good team. We felt like we had given away an opportunity at Marquette. We were up 11 in the first half of that game and didn't play particularly well in the second half. So we knew a lot was at stake. We had a big week with the Marquette game and the Creighton game coming up, and it was really important for us to take care of our home court. Felt like we should have beat them the last time at their place, but road game is always tough. So. I uh, just wanted to come out with energy, get our, get our groove back. Marquette in their road blue. You kind of the home white. They win the opening tip. Down low to Sonoto, try to save it. He does back to Caravan. They get five to shoot now. Got to get it off. It's going to be Hawkins. He pulls up and fires and hits. Bullock gets it back down the baseline. Good defense inside. Caravan to the cutting. Sonogo floats it up and in. Kick it back to Jones. Jones work right sideline. They spin it into the paint. It comes loose. Newton sprints to the front court. Gives to Jackson, and he flushes it. And this crowd has gone crazy. Newton to the front court, top of the key. Gives it up to Nahima Lane for a jump, and that's good. 17 to four. This crowd, 15,000 strong on their feet. The buzzer from 42 feet away. Uh, that wasn't a three, Wayne. That was a four. Oh, what a way to end the first half. It kind of felt good off my hands. So, like, when it came off, I was, like, looking at it. Well, that thing looked good. You know? so, so it went in. <laughs> Newton to a lean for a three ball. Ends the half. Much to the dismay of the crowd here at Butler. That butler shot, that kind of felt good off my hand as soon as I released it. I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like I always had a knack for, like, in the game situation shots. And I mean, uh, not, not even just here. I mean, I can't. I think back at Tech, I can hit a couple shots there. Five seconds. They're not giving it. For the tie. Yes! Incredible. March Madness is alive and well. Every time he hits him, I feel like we need him. So, uh, I guess he's real clutch in that sense. Tristan, you know, I mean, second triple double. You know, I, mean, I think this is like the first time uh, UConn player has gotten triple double in the same season, which is like really a big accomplishment. You know, what I mean, I I wish I can get a triple double like him. You know, I mean, you got you know, you got to do everything. Running against Buffalo, I think that was my first ever triple double. I've been close, not even in college. I've been close in high school a couple of times, but. Uh, yeah, this year, this is my first triple doubles. Most of the time, I don't even like have to jump for rebounds. They just fall into my hands because they're boxing out so well. Drives in the front court, attacks the 10, puts up a floater, in and out, and got his own rebound and saves it to Caravan. Caravan into the paint, kicks back to Hawkins for three. Back rim no good, rebound Newton, and Newton's foul. UConn has been on top of the boards, and this crowd appreciates it. to the floor. Newton, his second triple-double of the year, and an 87-72 win. What a night in Hartford for the Huskies. Well, I'll say. Creighton game was next, and we know what a hostile environment that is. Uh, that may be the toughest home court environment for us to play in on the road. We didn't play particularly well, which is unfortunate. You know, I thought when we played Creighton at Gamble Pavilion, 
we did a really good job of establishing Adama inside. He dominated in that game, had 26 points, but then some other guys made shots as well. You know, Jordan Hawkins played well, Tristan Newton played well. I'll say like the first game, we knew that we had to, you know, give it to him and we really did you know, at home so that was a good job for us and then the second game i really felt like that was a march madness type of game we knew it was going to be a really tough game they're a really good team they're they're i think they're a top 10 team they're, they're a team that can go to the final four uh, but we looked at it as we're a team that can go to the final four and we knew it could be a battle i mean which it was if you had told me that they would have scored 56 points in the game and we would have been able to held down their individual players like that i would have thought we would have won the game Adama did a great job. You know, we had him kind of utilized in a different way. It was more as a three-point jump shooter in that game. We looked at that as something that we could exploit. They kick it back to Sonogo. Another three. Good! Oh, man, and he beat the shot clock on top of that. Wow, long distance Adama. 19 seconds left. And a rebound. Hawkins for three. Good! 2.7 left. And they're going to review it. They're going to see if it was a three or a two. Yeah, right I, now the game is tied if it's a three. Uh, unfortunately for my sight line on the bench, I knew right away that his foot was on the line. So, you know, a lot of credit to Jordan for stepping up and knocking down the shot and obviously, you know, put us really close to being able to send the game to overtime. And unfortunately, we had the loss, but I mean, we'll see him again for sure. 64-55 win for UConn. It was a grinder. It was a black and blue affair all the way through Andre Jackson courtside with us. Andre, great game for you, 15 and 10. I love double-doubles. You handle the ball a lot as a point guard here this afternoon. How important was that today? Really just get in where I can fit in, honestly. Just if I got to bring the ball up, if I got to set a screen and play the one through four, really both sides of the ball. So uh, that's just credit to Coach Hurley and just him allowing me to play in so many different positions on the court, and I really appreciate that from him. The heart and soul of the team, Andre. The work ethic, the energy, the leadership, the lead effort game-changing athletic and effort plays and unselfish plays and winning plays. And the most selfless player, I think, that you'll ever get the coach, especially moving forward. Just hearing him say the type of things like that, it really, it means a lot to me because that's really all I wanted to, since I got here was to earn his respect and to earn the respect of the coaches. Steal by Andre. Andre on a run out. Oh, he went behind his back and he threw it down. Andre Jackson. This is a guy that brings a lot of energy to the team. This is a guy that you want to compete with. This is a guy that you know if you, when you're playing with, the guy your back. So, him like being in this team, it changed everything for us. Jackson ahead to Sonogo with a great pass and a great catch for two. He sees the game almost a dribble ahead of the guys he's playing with, so you, in a way, need to get him to slow down a little bit because he sees plays before they happen. And add to that, you know, his height, the vision that he has because of his size, and it's a special combination. Pick and roll, great feet, cling and stuff. What a pass by Andre Jackson. When you have a teammate like him in the huddle next to you, leading you, competing against the opponent, you believe you can beat anybody. got it done today. All right, congratulations. Thanks, Andre. Thank you. It's Andre Jackson. Better call somebody like me Cause you want somebody like me When the lines get a little blurry Gonna need somebody like me Senior night here at Gamble Pavilion. We're getting set to honor the four of the men who are in their senior seasons or their fourth year of eligibility or graduating. Things have changed so much with the transfer portal. Folks honored including Richie Springs, Joey Calcaterra, Tristan Newton, and Naheem Aline. You think about the journey, you think about all the moments along the way, day of the game, during the ceremony. They've sacrificed to have an opportunity to play in these big moments in March, to have the type of season that this group has had. You know, in a lot of ways, we've done things that haven't been done here in quite some time, so get so much respect for what they've been able to deliver right away. This year night this year meant everything to me, man, because all these guys, they came in this year and we, we built really close friendships and relationships. That also just makes me realize like how much we got to make this season worth it, because I'm never going to get the opportunity to play on the same exact team with these same guys again, so you can't take it for granted. I'm living my fantasy.
see I'm right where I want to be To the front court, pulls up, gives to Jackson, gets it back Newton for three, long one, got it! So UConn wins it by final of 87 to 69. We are joined by Alex Caravan. Gave the coach a big hug. I was so excited to play this game. I wanted to leave the seniors with a great note, even though they've most of them been here for a year. I want them to live that UConn experience. Alex, before the game, the coaching staff told you guys to win the war in the paint. What do you think about rebounding 40 to 20? UConn, 40 to, 20. 40 to 20. How about that? I mean, coach made a big emphasis two practices ago. We were hitting each other. We were bruising each other in the box out drills. I just, I'm, I'm so happy that paid off. <laughs> to be a freshman uh, in the Big East playing the four, and to be a pretty much a day one starter on a team that has played at the level that we've played at this entire year. It's not a lot of freshman front court players that have done what he's done. Toughness. And Caravan got the rebound. He attacks inside and he hits! Oh, Caravan, that's all about one two. He beat two men to the offensive glass and he put it back in. I didn't have a doubt about like that. I didn't know Alex was going to do this this season. Watching him since last year, like watching him in the practice. You do some stuff in his game, I'm like, damn. Caravan attacking inside, spinning, baiting, banking. Good! Oh, that was sweet by Caravan. He's proven that he can be consistent and that he's a dog, somebody who dedicates his life to the game, so he's always going to be ready. And it shows out there on game day. He's somebody that's really locked into this, and I definitely trust that guy a lot when I'm out there on the court with him. Andre starts left, now into the right side. He gives to Caravan for three. Yeah, he got it! With no time left, it went in. It's a three ball, and UConn goes to the locker room up 40 to 28. Welcome to the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. UConn St. John's 12 noon tip. Andre Jackson circles top of the key. He gives the left side to Hawkins. Down low to Sonogo. Sonogo puts it on the floor with the right hand. They double him. He gets it to Jackson, and Andre dunks. He waited for the double team to come, and he found the open man. Dama's improved a lot this year, like passing out of double teams. He's shown he's a really good passer, so now teams have to respect that as well. So he's added a whole other dimension to his game, and that's just made us more dangerous of a team. I want them to double team me, because I feel like when they that, that makes stuff is, you know, I can pass the ball, I get some assists and stuff like that, yeah. Players around him tend to shoot very, very high percentages from the three-point line because going into every game you know, he's at the top of the scouting report and to still have produced at the at the ridiculous level he has with his efficiency as an improved passer jordan and alex and joey and naheem and tristan man hope they got him something nice for christmas or for his birthday when he turned 21. and she made me a winner number one what they say everything we deliver is for the love of the game UConn wins it 95 to 86. And this UConn crowd getting behind him. And the Huskies will be back here in a couple weeks to play in the Big East tournament. We did pretty well this year with this group in, in the PK tournament, so that was a good test for us in terms of tournament play. But going into March, it's going to definitely be a lot different. And, and next weekend, we got the Big East tournament. So, uh, you know, that's one, one loss and you're out of there. So, you just got to, I mean, win every game. And, and, and there's not a choice whether you. You win or lose, you have to win, or else you're out. <laughs> I really just think that this team is built for March. We've got a lot of depth. We've got a number of different players that can beat you from deep. You know, we've got a two-headed monster at center that can absolutely dominate its opponent. I just feel like this is a, a group that has the swagger and the confidence to go into those tournament games in March and really believe. Step.
steps to keep moving forward Gotta push and blow the doors open The future's ours, we see it, we know it You can't stop, the revolution is growing Yeah, ahead, never back, the movement's here A stake in our claim, the picture's clear This is our anthem, this is our song March on the team If I win or I lose, I don't feed on approval. Don't need statues and gold. Temples crumble to ruins. Centuries from today, history will remember. Carved in stone on my grave lies a legend forever. I'm the son, I'm the father. I was raised in the fire all my life. the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. The Big East Tournament, the quarterfinals. UConn getting set to take on the Providence Friars. There was nothing like the, the Big East Tournament. There's not another conference tournament that, that can come close to touching it. It's just do or die, honestly. Like, you win, you stay, you lose, you're out. So everybody's fighting for their life. Right wing, now left wing to Jackson for three, and Andre hits. Providence, I think we played as, as good as Almost any team could have played. The first 28, 30 minutes, we came out, you know, looking like one of the best teams in the country. Andre goes behind his back. Now he hacks. Oh, he gives to lean in the corner. Oh! Back to Newton, sets the fire at three. Bang! Sonogo has it out to Calcaterra and a bounce pass to Jackson, who stuffs it home! You know, and then like tends to happen in March, you know, the other team made a run, especially when you're playing against quality teams. and. We kind of stumbled and bumbled through the next seven or eight minutes of almost playing as badly as we can play. And it was, I thought, good for us that we faced some adversity there and, and had to bear down. And Jordan made a huge three, Alex made a huge three, and then Tristan found Adama on a big ball screen roll. Rebounded by Newton, dumps to Sonogo, and he dunks! UConn gets out of here with a win after leading by 26. As we get ready to get underway. Late arriving crowd, it's New York, remember? And the tip won by Sonogo. Marquette game was, you know, a tough game. Uh, you know, Marquette's, you know, one of the best teams in the country. They knocked us back on our heels with their defensive pressure to start the game. And, you know, we were able to, you know, to obviously gather ourselves and, you know, tie it up before the half. You know, and then they jumped us to start the second half and getting behind by 10 became, you know, too, too big of a mountain to climb when you're playing against a, a team of their caliber. Well, that hurt us a little bit, but you know we're trying to put that in the past, and we're going to worry about the future and get ready for March. Staying in New York uh, after the game and, and watching the film the next day and, and talking about the game, and I think it allowed us to kind of leave it there. So we got on the bus, our total focus became you know, the NCAA tournament, the excitement of, of going again for the third straight year, the excitement of being uh, a pretty high seed and, and uh, you know, waiting for the big reveal. It's a blend of excitement, uh, anxiety, and the not knowing. There's definitely an exhilaration as, uh, as the selection show gets close. Really can't wait uh, to see where we're going and who we play. Uh, we've grown to love this team. I mean, we, we've loved coaching this team. This is a fabulous team. It's a team that's proven it could play great during tournaments. Uh, and obviously it's, it's proven that it could, it could go on winning streaks during the year. You know, winning 14 in a row at one point, winning six in a row, which is what it's all about this time of year, being able to obviously win the first one, but then go on a, on a run. And this is a team that, uh, you know, that's proven it could do it. And it's an incredible group of young men. They're incredibly competitive. They're about winning. They're super talented. They're tough. And uh, I think we're about to have a special, uh, 
special couple weeks here. So thank you all for coming. The fourth seed, UConn. We, uh, we ended up getting to see the fourth and we're playing against Iona. They're a really gritty team, a team that's going to try and get under us, and that's, that's my style of play as well. So that's what I'm looking forward to for sure. That first matchup is everything. Like, since I've been here, we haven't been able to win that first matchup. So that's all I'm looking at. We just got to take this one game at a time, not worry about, you know, second round, third round, whatever. You know, we have one game on Friday night, and, you know, we just got to get ready for that game. You know, you're hoping that you have players that have a little bit of that magic that, you know, in these big moments under the bright lights where, you know, you recruited and developed the right people that can come through and, and hit the big shots to help you advance. If we're the best version of ourselves, uh, and everyone plays completely to our identity, um, you know, then good things will happen for us in this tournament. Everyone in this locker room is ready to go, and, you know, we see ourselves as one of the best teams in the country, and you know, we don't think anyone can stop us. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I've waited all my life, but I ain't got time to blow. No, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. So cut me loose, sit back, enjoy the show. I'm ready to go. You want name recognition and juicy storylines? You've come to the right place. Danny Hurley, what a run it's been at Connecticut. Back into the tournament. Can they get the monkey off their back? And of course, the legend Rick Pitino, the Hall of Famer, looking to make some magic. With a prior march, uh, your lack of performance, is certainly a, a, a level of, of pressure going into that first round game. And there was. Uh, obviously a lot of attention and a lot of hysteria around playing Iona and Rick Pitino. Well, we were just extremely confident. I mean, we knew there was a burden on us that we couldn't get past the first round, but we didn't have that pressure on our shoulders. So. Coach took a lot of pressure off of all the guys, especially me, going into the game, just letting us know that we had a different team going into it this year. We're a better team than, uh, than Iona. Um, there's nothing that they could change about that during the course of, uh, of the preparation leading up to the game. Uh, when we're at our best, it, it's better than any level that they could get to. Um, do what we do, the dominant defensive performance, uh, win, the, win the rebounding war, and, and share the ball offensively. Um, you know, we're one of the best offensive teams in the country, one of the best defensive teams in the country, and we're one of the best rebounding teams in the country. Andre Jackson, meantime, homecoming for him. He grew up about 30 minutes away in Amsterdam, New York. How does he fare in front of his family and friends in the biggest moment of his basketball life? Andre Jackson answers the bell, so no go! This young man is a monster for this team. What a season it has been for him, leading scorer in the Big East. Beric Jean Luis all the way to the cup. Play the line of screen, he'll fire, splash! Iona punches back. A two-point lead for the 13-seeded Gales as we reach halftime. Both Iona and the St. Mary's games, there, there were things in the first half that, um, you know, that we needed to make adjustments on. Uh, you know, in the Iona game, they were playing well above their head. Um, and we knew that they would come back down to earth. Uh, obviously, I think just in the St. Mary's game, you know, we were playing against a, a really, really tough-minded, good defensive team that we were methodically going to have to just eventually, you know, break down. We just have a great coaching staff that knows how to make adjustments, and uh, we have the players to uh, understand those adjustments and turn it up a couple notches when we need to, and uh, that's what we did. Been fighting so hard all of my life. Getting so close and it feels like I'm taking my place in the spotlight Better get ready, better get ready Ooh, We don't back down, this is what we're made of Standing our ground, here it goes down Ain't no time like the here and now Yeah, we showed up, now we showing up So the shot clock didn't reset. Right, they raise the roof off this place. So no go. Unreal. 
Adama Sinogo, masterful, 28 points, 13 rebounds. And it will be the Huskies and the Gales on Sunday here in Albany. Bending off his defender, playing it down the piece. One of the leading shot blockers in the Big East. Jackson, this is Hawkins. Got it! And here come the Huskies. Hawkins step up three. Puts it down the piece, starting to cut. Hawkins shattered by Johnson, rises. It's just special when you're one of just 16 teams left playing for a chance to get to a Final Four, playing to get to an Elite Eight, playing to get to a national championship game. You've got more eyeballs on you, so you're playing in even bigger games, in bigger arenas, in bigger cities. Just seeing your team advancing in this very difficult tournament to win in. Um, not a lot of teams play get to play in it, especially not in the Sweet 16. Not, it's only 16 teams, so you know you work so hard to get to this moment, and, and you're seeing your hard work start to pay off, but you know there's more to prove. Good evening, everyone, from Las Vegas, Nevada, hosting its first ever NCAA tournament game. And welcome to the Sweet 16, the West Region. As the eighth seed Arkansas Razorbacks from the SEC play the fourth seeded Connecticut Huskies of the Big East. When you play elite defense the way that we've, we've been able to play it and win the rebounding battle the way we're able to win it, both on the defensive glass, but getting those extra possessions on offense. The difference this year in terms of being able to go on runs to separate from opponents, the three-point shooting, you know, the multiple players uh, from Alex Caraban to Jordan Hawkins uh, to Naheem Aleen and Tristan Newton, uh, Joey California. You know, we just have these guys that can go on runs and, and create that type of separation because we're getting stops on defense and now we're finishing at the rim and going on runs at the three-point line. in every way you look. This was a complete demolition. And there's no other team going to the final four than you got. Emotionally, there's a lot of highs, a lot of lows, um, but this time of year, I think, you know, in the lead up to some of these games, I find myself, you know, getting really emotional, just thinking about what this group has meant uh, to coach every day. It's it's a great group. They've uh, they've won a lot of games together. It's a great group of guys that it, that truly have a unique unique bond. You could preach culture and family all you want. Some teams buy in a lot more than others and you just don't want it to end you know you don't want to have that last practice you don't want to have a last game with them this team is my favorite team I ever played on these are my brothers and regardless of basketball these guys will always be my brothers 
we just want the season to last as long as possible. That's all we keep saying is we love to play with one another. Let's get to a final four, though. Come on. Man, this team's very special. We'll always have a special place in my heart. Just love playing with these guys like, like no other team I've ever been on. I mean, I've been on part of some good teams, but this team is very different. Um, just have their chemistry was on a different level. The final four is great. We talked about that as a goal, but ultimately, our goal is to win a national championship. Obviously, doing that in a place like UConn, it's a serious legacy. You become immortal. I think we have the best team going out there into the Final Four. It's all about just sticking to our identity and, and really just doing what we do. Man, just continue what we've been doing, um, playing hard, uh, rebounding, playing defense, and we'll have the 2023 banner right behind me. time of year everything was pretty automatic everyone knew their role we, we had established all the winning habits everyone knew what to do at both ends of the court on the backboard so really just go out and play to our identity and get lost in the next play get lost in in making winning plays beating a very well talented Arkansas team with a bunch of lottery picks by, by like 20 something and then beating Gonzaga by 30 I mean that's unheard of and to do that is something crazy special and we knew that we were more than capable of winning it all after the Sweet 16 Elite Eight matches. Okay, we've got some news here to report that involves UConn star player Hawkins. He's had a stomach flu this week. Trace, what's the latest? That's right, Jordan Hawkins came down with a stomach bug on Thursday night. He did not practice on Friday. He was limited in shoot-around this morning. I was told he is good to go. He will start, but how effective he will be remains to be seen. I wasn't sure that he would be available uh, day of the game. He did not get through much of shoot around. Uh, I would say he was at probably 50%. Definitely, I remember we were in shoot around. You know, Jared always used to be, like, he loved talking and shoot around. Like, you know, but I didn't see him do that. I'm like, bro, what is wrong with you? you know? And that's when I know, like, ah, it's something like he's sick, you know? He was a little sick, but I knew he was going to play. They were asking me about that before the game, and I was like, yeah, he's going he's gonna to show up for us. UConn, the higher seed in the home whites. And Miami, O'Meara trying to control it, but no one's going to go to the Huskies to start. The Huskies, who have been blowing out all their opponents to get here. And they come out with an outside shot. Questionable just a day ago. And comes right out, rips the nets. First six to Connecticut on a pair of threes. One by Hawkins, one by Sunoco. He's going for another. Why not? Does it again. Two for a Lost control of it. Out with it as well, and he got fouled by Jackson. The foul that's significant to note was on Andre Jackson, and he picks up his second just four minutes and change into the game. Yeah, I think if Andre was a different type of player, maybe a little bit more passive, uh, maybe not quite as aggressive, there would be a chance maybe to play him with two fouls. But it, um, the fact that we were you know, in the lead and it was multiple possessions and we hadn't faced a big run by Miami made the decision easier. But, you know, it, it's hard to put a guy like Action Jackson in with two fouls. It was tough, but it, it gave me some opportunities to just sit there and watch my teammates and, and they all picked up a lot of slack. Guys played super great. So uh, it, was, it was actually good. We got out to a good lead.
AK shot the ball. I remember knowing he was going in uh, just because, you know, he's had a couple halftime buzzer beaters this year and it's normal for him to, you know, hit big shots like that because, you know, he's just a, such a knockdown shooter and he works so hard for moments like that. Looking back at it, the best part of that play was you see Jordan standing there with his arms up in the air and just celebrating right before. I was like, wow. I was on the bench and I, I jumped up, I ran, gave him a high five and we, we all ran into the locker room with a lot of energy. It's going to take a, a full 40 to kill these guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they've been in this position before, maybe not exactly in this position versus this type of team, you know, but they've been able to come back and the way that happens to us is it slips. We knew that they were crazy comebacks, but we knew that the teams that they played weren't like us. So we knew going into it that they were capable of it, but they, they hadn't seen a team like us yet. So we weren't too concerned about it. Really, our, our defensive efforts in the back-to-back -back games, the Gonzaga defense versus Miami, two of the top offenses in the country, to, to shut them down the way we did, the, the individual defense on the ball, which was something earlier in the year that was a problem. I, I couldn't have been prouder because that's an effort thing, that's a culture thing, and th that's, a, that's a selfless thing, that's a we thing. I had in my time and that's a race against my past. Whenever they clock me, that's 2,000 on the dash. When it kind of tickles me and every day I laugh. Yeah, you know we number one and you don't need to ask. I got the magic, feel like I'm a greyhound looking at a rabbit. Finish line so close, I reach out and grab it. I only look back just to look at your reaction. Can't stop when we start, we get it done. Take no days off, we number one. Lace up these kicks and we run like this. Well, Miami, just no match for the Husky Express heading to a Monday night championship appearance. We knew we were going to be playing on Monday. There wasn't much celebration in that locker room. I think we just turned it quickly and just where leaders are focused on to wanting to play in the national championship game already. It's always one more. Uh, every, single, every single game is always trying to get the next one. Uh, trying not to, you know I mean, celebrate too much because it's not over until it's done. You underrate the pressure from winning the Final Four game to playing in the national championship game, really up until the anthem. It was literally the, the most nervous I've been for any one game. Uh, I told the media that it's the most peaceful I had been, maybe trying to convince myself of that. But just getting to that game and knowing that you have an opportunity to do something that not many coaches or teams will ever do, it's like... You know, truly, like Coach Calhoun said, it's a forever thing, and you get a piece of immortality. Now the journey, it ends right here tonight. Lisa now is it to Bradley, who also is off to a hot start in the semifinal game. Butler, oh, he was taken right up where we left off. This time the three. And when you hit a game winner, that confidence is riding high. He looks up, head fake on Caravan. Feeds the corner, and that's another three. How about that, Tremel, huh? Tremel. It was similar to the Iona first half. There was never a feeling while that was going on that, that it was sustainable for them. You know, you don't get rattled uh, at that point. You know, you stick to the game script, you follow your game plan, and you stick to your principles. There's Hawkins. He pulls up and fires it. He hits his own big shot. The Jackson. Jackson always seems to be in the right place at the right time. He's come off the floor with it. That ball hit a leg. And Sonogo lost a shoe, but he's got his third basket already. Tough shot. Look at that but he counters. Wow. Look at the kiss. Fig Newton. Now Patera with five to shoot. This is where they are tough. Nine deep with talent. Down the lane. Flips it up. I felt like we should have been up 20. Multiple guys missed layups, a point blank, um, and then we had a couple live ball turnovers, but you know, we, we were cooking on offense and uh, we probably should have had 45 points. We own second halves. Right, we've already body blowed these guys for 20 minutes, and we haven't even played close to our best. This is 20 minutes for the big trophy. Let's yes. go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, leave it all out there. Family on three. One, two, three. Yeah. Yeah.
It was honestly just a blur. I remember just running onto the court. I seen Drew spike the ball. It really felt like a dream, honestly. It doesn't feel real when like the buzzer is getting close down to the game ending. Just finally having that buzzer sound was amazing. The last second of the game, I'm like, and I see everybody running to the court, and I'm like, wow, you know. And I run out to the court to grab a ball, you know, so I can keep that for myself. Proud of all the guys because they all contributed. Yeah, you know, they either contributed tangibly on the court with production, or they contributed to a great locker room. You know, guys like Richie and, and Apostolos and Yarn. You know, even though they didn't play much, they you know great locker room guys, and they helped us in practice. Samson, he was a guy that got back late in the year to help us in practice, and it was a great group with the three guys off the bench. Joey's personality and shot making. Naheem's uh, defense and you know and double figure scoring off the bench was huge and. You know, Son is a junkyard dog. And then obviously Donovan Klingon, no one had a bigger impact off the bench than Donovan. Donovan, I'd imagine, was the best six man in college basketball. We had the big three coming into the year that we knew uh, was going to deliver for us in, in Jordan, Andre, and Adama, uh, NBA level players that formed an incredible nucleus that, that we could build around. And Tristan, you know, a little bit of that kind of even keel really. You know, helped him in the biggest game of the year. You know, he had his best performance. Alex Caraban was one of the best freshmen in the country. I don't know that he ever got as much recognition as he deserved. You know, he's obviously a, a guy that we build around the next couple of years, and he's got a chance to win more championships and then you know go off to the NBA. Huge thanks to you guys, Husky Nation, the home crowds this year at XL and Gamble, incredible. The followings at the Garden and in Albany and out in Vegas and Houston. Incredible, incredible scenes at the hotel, returning from, from great wins. Everything just kept getting bigger and better. We're already working on trying to get you that sixth one, but it's not easy to do. Enjoy, enjoy getting number five.